video, I'm going to talk to you about um, the consonant and vowel phoneme charts or vowel valley and um, how you can utilize this with your students and help use it for your instruction. Um, so most of the consonant phoneme charts look similar to this. This one is from the letters manual. Um, Tools for Reading has one that is similar um, and you may see other versions of this, um, but they all pretty much work the same. On the left side, you have the um, different types of consonant phonemes. Across the top, you have the place and manner of articulation, um, or sorry, the place of articulation where your lips, teeth, or tongue are when you're saying that phoneme sound. Um, if you look in each of the squares, some of them have pairs, and these just mean that they are the voiced and unvoiced pairs. So when you say the um, F sound, f, your teeth are on top of your bottom lip. And you, if you put your hand on your throat and say f, your voice box is off. You don't feel any vibration, so it's an unvoiced sound. You're doing the same exact motion with your mouth when you make the V sound, v, except now you can feel the vibration in your throat. So you're turning on your voice box to go from the sound f to the sound v. And when you're doing that and going through this chart and kind of just making the sounds yourself and looking at your mouth and how it's forming the sounds and thinking about your voice box, it kind of makes sense and you begin to understand why students confuse these phonemes and their spelling. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use that to help with our instruction. So these are some examples of um, student misspellings and how we can use the consonant phoneme chart to look for why that may have happened. Um, so we have fan is the word we want them to spell and they spell it V-A-N. So when I look at these two words, I can think, hmm, something's happening here to confuse them between the f and v sound. Um, and if we look back at the consonant chart, we can see that they are a voiced and unvoiced pair. They're both fricatives in the same manner of articulation. And um, when we prompt that student to check their spelling, we need to instruct them to put their, to think about if it's voiced or unvoiced and they can put their hand on their throat as they say the two different sounds to feel the difference and then say the word again and see if they can feel um, it voiced or unvoiced to help clarify that. If we look at sharp and charp, let's go back and look at these. We have sharp is here, charp, they spelled it ch, would be down here. So when we look at that, we had a continuous sound, sh with a stop sound, ch. So we want them to think about how does this sound when um, you're making the sound. And with continuous and stopped, you can put your hand in front of your mouth to feel um, the air. If you would like to pause the video and take a look at the rest of these, um, that may be helpful with some prompts to help kids with some of these mistakes that they make in their spelling. Um, and lastly, we'll look at the vowel valley. And the way this works is this kind of um, mimics your jaw movement as you make each of these vowel sounds. So when you say E, you think the corner of your lips are pulled back and um, your lips are closer together when you say the long E sound. Um, as you go down and say each of the sounds, your jaw drops slightly for each one until you get to ah, and your mouth is all the way open. As you work your way back up, you get to you. Now your lips are kind of pinched together um, and your jaw is closed. Um, and that's kind of one way to think about it. You can see how kids commonly um, mix up the I and S sound. If you say I, you can think like you can fit your fingernail between your teeth. I. When you say E, eh, you can kind of fit your finger between your teeth, obviously. Um, in today's day and age, we don't really want kids putting their fingers in their mouth, but that's one way to think about it, how to tell the difference when they're saying the word and go to spell it. 
down here we have diphthongs and then um, vowel R teams. And then um, the wonderful schwa kind of hangs out here in the middle. One other thing to notice on here is um, we have two different kind of long U sounds, which you could get into and get nitpicky with your students, um, but depending on where they are and their levels, you don't really need to. So if you think um, like the word moon, you just hear the pure ooh, right? Ooh. But then in like unicorn or few, you hear that Y before the long U. Um, so there's just some things to think about when you look at the Vowel Valley. And um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. This has been a really quick, brief introdu introduction to this. Um, and there are a lot of resources out there to kind of dive deeper into using this as a tool in your classroom.